Hello, hello. It's Bernadette Gold, and I've got a very special, very special interview with Susan, who I've been working on with biomagnetism therapy and health coaching for the last few months. And I want her to tell you her story. So we're just going to have a conversation and I'm going to introduce her to you. I've been meaning to do this for a bit, but we wanted to get her on the other side of her major symptoms that she came to me for. So welcome, welcome, Susan. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm I'm so excited that we get to do this. So excited. So let's start with, um, we started working together. January 5th was your first session. Yes. Why did you come? Do you remember what was going on? I certainly do. I was extremely ill. I didn't know how much longer I was going to make it. I had a very difficult year last year seeking lots of help from many different providers. And really, it had been going on for many years. Uh, But it got to the point where my body was shutting down and there wasn't any any doctor or any provider that could give me any any results as to what was going on and i had extreme abdominal pain that i wasn't i wasn't able to eat even so i was barely existing gotcha. i found you online well we I've been following you for years but i saw that you did biomagnetism and you connected to one of the um viruses that I knew that I had, and I knew that there was hope with what you were doing with biomagnetism. So what was your hope when we first started? What was the initial hope without knowing much about biomagnetism? I knew that the alkaline and my body was off balance. I had tried medical medium. I had tried other holistic practitioners. So I had already been informed by lab tests. And by my own little bit of research that I had the knowledge of doing, I knew that things weren't balanced properly. And so when you started addressing that, I knew that if we could get me somewhat aligned or balanced, I could possibly get right back back on the right track. Right. So I'm going to read, if it's okay with you, I want your permission. Um, Just some of the notes I took when we first jumped on our first call before I even did your first session, like we got on the call and you told me what was going on. Can I read those things? Yes, please do. (laughs) So you had been diagnosed recently with a hiatal hernia, had had a endoscopy. That was the month before, I believe, right? I actually had the endoscopy like uh, oh, the, day, right. the day after we talked for the first time. <laughs> yeah, you had the procedure after, but it was scheduled before. That's right. It was it the was. day after we talked, but before your first session. Yes. Yes. Gotcha. I remember that. Okay. Um, so hiatal hernia was one of the concerns. You had vertigo, really debilitating vertigo. Right? Absolutely. Um, you were told you had an old stroke that had happened. Yes. You had gut pain. Severe. And you had had your gallbladder out last August. I did. Because of all of that, you were experiencing constipation um, and what they called gastritis. And when I say they, I mean doctors. Um, yeah. And you suffered for for um, GERD from reflux <clears throat> on top of your hormones being off. That was your main concerns when we first started. That's all I have written on your first <laughs> your first sheet. Now, as we got into working together, um, there was a lot more that showed up that we hadn't discussed, like. You had nerve pain, you have nerve pain that that radiated down from the top of your head, your face, it affected your face in what way? Oh, I had twitches and uh, my eye would twitch, the side of my face would twitch, um, tingling, it hurt. I had migraines. Didn't your face, you had migraines? Mm -hmm. Didn't your face go numb sometimes too? Yes. Like facial paralysis? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, as we continued on, 
some of your other symptoms began to be addressed, but you had never mentioned them to me. Things like your tears and your, your sinuses. Can you explain that a little bit? What was happening? You, you mentioned it in some, in one of your podcasts that this had happened to your dad, but I only mentioned the major things because quite frankly, I had brain fog so bad. And mm-hmm. also I didn't want to blow you away by how many things were wrong with me. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought I better just tell you the major issues that were my main concern, but I did not have any tears for years. I could not cry. If I tried to, my face would swell up profusely uh, yeah. for days. So I had, I had no tears that would come out. I was using these over the counter artificial tears. And then there's an also, a prescription tear you can get. I won't say the name of it, but we all know what it's called. There's many commercials for it. Um, I was using that to help me with tears and to, it didn't help. And I had no nasal drainage whatsoever. So, yeah. Yeah. No sign. <laughs> There's all of your mucous membranes were clogged, like things exactly. were not draining. Did the doctors ever address that? Never. And then did you tell them about it? Possibly. Uh, I did get, I did get the prescription for the tears. So Mm -hmm. one time I mentioned that as a symptom and was given a prescription for the restasis. I'll just say it, Um, you know, and it was never really mentioned again. That wasn't a major issue. Quite frankly, lots of my, as everyone knows, when you have a doctor visit, there's only limited time that mm-hmm. they can speak to you. And so you better just talk about the main things because they don't have time to hear the whole story. And if you tell them the whole story, they'll put you on antidepressants. Yeah. So you were on a yeah. lot of medications when we first started to. So you were on a medication for reflux. Um, you were on a medication for, you were on Miralax basically. Three times a day is what you were told to take Miralax to deal with the constipation that seemed to be caused by, you didn't know what at the time, but um, it's the the reflux, just for people's education, when you take acid reflux pills, any kind of over the, over the counter Prilosec, whatever you take, it suppresses your hydrochloric acid in your stomach, which then, so that you don't, you don't get the acid up in your throat, but then it does cause constipation. So the flip side of that medication, um, which wasn't the only cause you had severe constipation, right? Yes. And then when you did go to the bathroom, you had issues with hemorrhoids as well, which we didn't talk about the first session either, because that wasn't a big deal in the beginning. But as things started to unfold, that became a little bit of an issue because you weren't eliminating right? I was not. And the hemorrhoids were a part of my life for many, many years. This, right. These conditions were going ongoing for so many years that it became normal for me to deal with these things. And it wasn't something that I brought to the forefront because I knew that I was so critically ill. I just wanted you to address the main things. Yeah. I had no idea we'd be peeling back the layers and getting into all this. Yeah, no. That so much, so much happened. So as we began to work together, um, one thing after another started to, to unravel and a big part of this, like there was concerns with, you know, did you have fibromyalgia? Did you have chronic fit? What did you have? Like all of these things. And, and you did have a pretty intense blood panel done. And I think you had multiple done when you went to your holistic doctor, right? I did. I went to her in 2020 and then COVID happened. Uh, Well, I went to her in 2020 and then I went back in 2022 and she ran this extreme panel and she found all these viruses. The problem was, is her protocol didn't work for one thing. The other thing was I was too sick from the neurotoxins to really pay attention and to address it. We had a communication problem. And it just didn't work. I knew these things existed, but I just didn't take it seriously and dive into it. And I doubt I would have been able to get to the bottom of it anyway. I had read Anthony Williams' books and tried the protocol on my own. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. 
I was too ill. It didn't so you work gave for up. me. I did. Yeah. And that's when we started working together. You were kind of in that mode of like, I'll try this, but <laughs> if it doesn't work. And I think your exact uh, words to me were, I have my affairs in order. I did. Yeah. So some of the things that came up and some of the things that we worked on for, for those of you who are listening, um, and, and before she sent me her blood work, maybe a month after we started to work together and, you know, did not, I did not share with her all of the pathogens that I had been addressing with her biomagnetism sessions. So I didn't address any of the parasites, any of the fungus, any of some, maybe some of the fungus I did. I did as minimum information giving to her because she didn't want it. She didn't want to overwhelm herself or scare herself because part of what has been going on for her is that she has undergone several PTSD events and had a lot of triggers. So it was like, don't tell me, you know, it's just going to scare me. So I didn't, there's some things that I knew that she knew like systemic candida. She had systemic candida. She, I think we talked about Epstein-Barr virus, or I had asked you about Epstein-Barr and we, we talked about HH6. We talked about some of the different things, you know, that, that were showing up on her scans. Um, but I have not to this day revealed to Susan, all of the viruses and pathogens that was in her system. Epstein-Barr, EBV, certainly was something that came up on her blood work and she had known or had heard, you kind of confirmed that, right? Like, I don't remember. I knew about that. Yeah, I don't remember when, but you knew about the Epstein-Barr. Um, and then there was cytomegalovirus, CMV. You Did you know about that when we first I, started working I, together? I recall it, but re remember again, I was full of neurotoxins and had extreme brain fog. So in January, although I recall everything and I did my own journaling, you were sort of talking to a different Susan than you're talking to today. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 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 Her brain fog was bad. It was, it was, walk us through, just for the listeners, walk us through how hard it was, you know, just summarize, like how hard it was for you to just do your daily activities and what would happen when you'd have to handle something like paperwork? I wasn't able to focus at all. Uh, it seemed too overwhelming. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the liver, as I have learned a lot through this journey, is also attached to emotional things as well. So whenever I would dive into trying to take care of something that was really important financially or um, something like that, something that absolutely had to be handled, it would make my chronic abdominal pain much worse. And I would just get overwhelmed and feel like I couldn't handle it. This was mental as well as physical. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the things I remember you saying to me is the doctors at the end, um, we're basically making it, making you feel like it was all in your head. Yes, I went to the ER four times in chronic pain, several times under the doctor, uh, under local physicians' advice, and they're busy. I understand the ER, but basically their scans and their, you know, I had four CT scans, their scans, their MRIs showed that I was clinically all of my organs and my my body was clinically remarkable, as they stated. Remarkable. So there was nothing wrong with me as far as they could see. Right. So you start thinking that there there must be something wrong with your head. Like this is all just something you're making up, even though you feel like crap. Yeah. The and abdominal pain was severe, and I really thought I wasn't going to live. Yeah. Well, I mean, so... As we began to work together, the first thing that I did address was her liver. And if any of you have followed me for any amount of time since I've come back into the whole healing work that I do from an alternative perspective, everything starts in the liver. So we addressed the reflux pretty quickly on. I had her do 
Anthony Williams protocol of the celery juice and then get a few of the supplements. We didn't do the whole protocol because that's ridiculous and it was too much for a sick person to have to deal with. Um, and rather than juicing, and she does have a juicer, rather than juicing celery juice because she was so exhausted, um, I had her, her order the organic powder and start with the celery juice powder just to get the celery juice in because it does break through the brain blood barrier and it helps to detox the body. It helps the body to eliminate. And her liver was not working. Now, like I mentioned, she had her gallbladder removed in August, last August, 2022. Um, and without a gallbladder to store bile reserves and being on reflux pills, her liver wasn't producing enough bile to handle anything. And you were allergic to pretty much everything, weren't you? I was allergic to every prescription medication that was given to me. And when I say allergic, my face blew up. I would have chronic abdominal pain. Sometimes I would run to a doctor and get a steroid shot. They were so concerned with my allergic reaction. In December yeah. was my last steroid shot because guess what that did? What? Hives. Uh, Chronic hives all over my entire body. That's the other thing that you were struggling with too, right? Which you didn't tell me. <clears throat> you had sores on your hands, different places on your skin, right? Absolutely. Everywhere. Yeah. And one of our, I think it was our very first session. <laughs> I think it was the very oh. first one. Um, while I have the magnets on you and she's in Tennessee, I'm in San Antonio. This is all done long distance. This is not like she's laying on my table. Um, in the middle of the session, what happened to your, your arm? I believe you said that was a parasite. Yeah. My, there was a red spot, a red bulge popped out of my arm. I took a picture of it and sent it to you and said, this hurts bad and it burns. What is this? Yeah. Yeah. Out of the blue, um, which was, A, it was good because it really meant like she was getting the effects of the biomagnetism. However, it was strange because it was like her first session. It scared her and it hurt. Um, and it was a parasite. That was the first thing that that we saw a manifestation on her body. A parasite was coming out of the skin on her arm. How long did it take for that to go away? Was... I think it took a few treatments. Yeah. I don't see the scar anymore. I used yeah. to still be able to see it. It's it's totally gone now. I think it took a few treatments. Yeah. But, but... you took the pain away of it away right away. Of course, you had to educate me what was going on, and you did it very, very gently because I wasn't well. Yeah, yeah. But you also had you had um, recurrent chronic spots on your hands um, and different parts of your body, the red spots, right? Oh, I did, yeah. Which were kind of unexplained as far as the doctors. Like, did they ever address that? Oh, they give me steroid creams, um, those type of things. Take this over-the-counter medicine, you know, take your Benadryl, take your over-the-counter things. Um, yeah. And all of that has bad side effects, as I have learned. And it's what, also stored in the body. What did they tell you about your chronic constipation? Because you were drinking plenty of water. It was as if they didn't believe me that I was eating a clean diet. And I mean, I, I, I was eating fairly clean compared to most people. I mm -hmm. wouldn't say I totally was uh, uh, not eating processed food, but I was eating gluten-free and I did always consume a lot of fruits and vegetables. There wasn't any explanation, just a lot of head shaking. Basically, I was told, take the citrus cell, take this Miralax, you know, Take it, take it, take it. It won't hurt you. And, and you know, push on. And the, the surgeon that did my gallbladder surgery, I spoke with him about it. And he said, I want you to eat prunes. Eat lots of them. Eat, eat lots of prunes. We're not going to address what the cause is. We're just going to treat the symptoms, which is basically what has been going on for years for you. Um, all right. So. I don't remember how long. I mean, honestly, I have an, a huge file. I've been taking notes every single day on her case. So moving 
to where we are now, and even just in the last month, what's happened for you? What has changed in your body? <laughs> I just have to remind you that I wasn't able to eat food at all, and I was on a liquid. I was on smoothies and, and your meal replacements and liquids only for several months. Now, we were moved, so we did remove all meat for for all of you listening. I did pull her off all solid foods when we first started working together because her liver was so congested and not working. It was causing so much pain for her um, that, yeah. But starting the celery juice too, for those of you listening, she was off the reflux pills almost immediately. It was only, I mean, it was within the first week, right? Yes. You stop the reflux pills. Yes. Yeah. So then, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt me and my ADD. Go on. So what <laughs> happened after that? Well, so we've slowly continued with the biomagnetism and uh, I've just followed the protocol. Um, all uh, Slowly, we've added food back into my life and I can't tell you how good my fruit and my foods that I'm cooking, because I do cook from medical medium, but all of these lovely foods that I'm able to consume and eat now, I have joy in my life. I have happiness again. I feel like I'm going to survive. One of the it's things emotional. that one of the things that you were told by one of the holistic doctors was okay for you to consume was eggs. Can you talk about that for a minute? Yes, although I was told that I had Epstein-Barr virus, I was told that it was still fine to eat meat and to eat eggs. And so you are the one that pointed out to me because I wasn't clear-minded and I wasn't reading his information well enough. You were the one that pointed out to me immediately, stop eating the eggs. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's always something that I say to someone the minute they tell me they have vertigo is eggs. Now your vertigo is different than a lot of people's vertigo. A lot of people's vertigo is caused by crystals in the ear that have become unseated, right? That's most people's vertigo. There's another type of vertigo that happens when you have neuropathy and neuralgia. Um, and and <laughs> Epstein-Barr is part of the herpes family. So there is something called post-herpetic neuralgia that will cause extreme dizziness and vertigo. And no matter what they treat within the ear, there's no way to get it to go away. Um, we've been working at it for a long time. You had days where the vertigo was off the charts, even while we were working together on your body and doing all the stuff. But we have had moments where the vertigo was not so bad that you were afraid. I mean, you were afraid to take a shower. Talk about that. Absolutely. I was afraid I'd fall. And when you're alone, you certainly know what happens when you have a fall. So yeah. I didn't want to have a fall. I was afraid to get in the car to go get food. Yeah. I felt that insecure that I was going to have an accident. That's how bad vertigo was. I would get out of bed in the morning and it was there. I would just grab onto the walls to get around and get through my day. It's so much better now. Good. Yeah. So much better that they had a tornado uh, last week. <laughs> and Susan was out picking up all kinds of debris from her yard, right? I was, yes, yes. Would that have been possible before we did the biomagnetism? No, no, absolutely not. I wouldn't have taken that chance. I wouldn't have made it. I would have fallen. Well, and you were so bad. I mean, all of your symptoms were so bad. You were having a hard time just keeping up with housework, let alone paperwork, let alone laundry and cooking. Yeah, I couldn't, I could barely take care of myself. I couldn't function. Now it's real exciting doing my own protocol and I'm very energetic. Yeah. And not, I mean, not everybody is going to be as severe as you. Susan was severely ill. I mean, I knew she was sick when she, she and I talked. Um, it wasn't until maybe the third or fourth session that I realized how very, very sick she was because each time I would do a session and do a scan, which I do a full scan every time, something else would pop up. 
And it isn't any of these isolated, well, it's this one virus or it's this one parasite or it's systemic candida. It wasn't just one thing. It was multiple things dancing together. Candida was a problem that we addressed fairly early on because um, it was a problem. And I'm not going to lie to any of you. Like this was an intense journey for her. And it's not like she didn't have things sort of crop up as we were. Uh, one of the first things that I think happened was as we were clearing the candida, you explained. <laughs> I'll let you put it into your own words. Oh, I don't recall. You don't remember? Like all of a no. sudden stuff started to come out like like you had a yeast infection? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it came out of many different places. That was crazy. <laughs> And then, yes. and, and it scared her, you know, cause she's like, am I getting worse? Right. Yes. The first thing you start to think is this is making me worse. There were yes. times when, I mean, when, when we did get it out and there was so much that came out that she was like, am I going to be okay? I think she asked me that question pretty much multiple times a day, every day. Like, am I going to be okay? Because things were coming out of her body and she was afraid that it was reactivating this stuff. Well, what? and as it was coming out, wasn't that neurotoxins as well affecting yes. my brain? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And because she wasn't eliminating real well, um, her her liver wasn't working real well, things were backing up. So so she would feel more toxic. And then I, and begged, then... I begged her, I'm like, you would make me so happy if you would go get an enema bag and do an enema. And she was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> I didn't think I could do it. And by that next morning, I had already went and purchased it before we spoke because I knew I had to. And so after you started, yeah, worth it. After you started to use the enemas to help hydrate and bring, you know, get your get your elimination happening. How did you start to feel? I started to feel better. You yeah. helped me realize that immediately it relieved all the pressure and any kind of backup that I felt in my intestines. Plus, I started to feel that the poisons and the toxins were draining out of my body. Yeah. And sometimes you have to. When I had cancer, I had to. I mean, it was, you know, six times a day I was doing enemas because my liver was so sluggish and there was no choice. You feel that toxic, you've got to get it out. Anthony Williams, the medical medium talks about this too, that when you're detoxing, you can experience the Herxheimer effect where you're, the toxins and the neurotoxins from die off of viruses, of parasites, of, of bacteria, whatever, can make you sick because your liver isn't operating enough to eliminate those toxins. So it will reabsorb it. It will stay in your bloodstream and your liver has no choice but to reabsorb those toxins. So then it becomes like a circle. You know, you, you kill it off, but then it gets reabsorbed and then you feel toxic again. The only way for us to get her <clears throat> better was to get it out of her body. Now she doesn't live in a place where there's any kind of like colon hydrotherapy. I was asking her like, go do that. Um, but there wasn't, and as much as we had to use <laughs> enemas, it would have cost her a fortune. So she had to learn how to do it herself. She didn't do it before. Now, mind you, and remember she had vertigo. So asking a woman who's sick and you were super, th I mean, you're still thin, but you were super thin and frail, right? Yes. And it's cold and it's winter. When we're going through all of this and I'm asking her lay on the floor and do an enema and then get up and eliminate, which kind of sounds crazy. How doable was it for you? When you are that chronically ill, you will do what you have to do to survive. I have a reason and a purpose. I wanted to live. I wanted to make it. You just do what you have to do if you're serious about this. I wasn't wasting your time and I didn't dive into this to give up. Yeah. And through that, we were able to clear so many things, but no lie. There were, I mean, because she has HH6, 
<clears throat> we did have moments when I would be working on different things to kill the viruses off, especially up in her face and then down in the liver. I mean, I worked on her entire body and continue to do so, but where I worked on her entire body. She would break out, you know, get sores in her mouth and her tongue. Like that was one of the major things in the beginning was your tongue, right? Oh, yes. What was going on with your tongue? I felt like there were cuts in my tongue. It was so painful to try to drink my smoothie or anything. It felt like someone had taken a knife and cut my tongue. And it, it was, was kind so of painful. white, right? Like your tongue wasn't pink. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. And that's, that is a sign um, of toxins. Like when you have a white tongue, when it's not pink and... And then you've got sores. I mean, there. <laughs> she would call me in the middle of the day and she's like, are you sure I'm going to be okay? Then I'd place some more magnets down and the pain would go away. Um, but we, but I don't want anyone to think that this is a magic bullet and it's one treatment and you're done when you're that sick. Like as the toxins are coming out, they will use whatever vehicle, whatever organ, whatever system it needs to come out. So she did have things come out of her skin. She did have things come out of her mouth. She did have weird things with her sinuses and every other orifice of her body, things were draining out. There was one point where um, we, we were killing some stuff off and working on your kidneys, your liver, your bladder, all of this stuff. You ended up having a um, what felt like a urinary tract infection, right? Yes. And then you went to the doctor and got antibiotics? I did. So don't think, all of you, that I'm against using something like that when you have to. She was already so, so sick. I did not want her to suffer needlessly. I left it up to her, but I told her if this, if it, because we waited maybe 24 hours, I'm like, if it's not getting better, rather than having it turn into a kidney infection um, and making things worse, because we were already stressing her body, detoxing, I had her go get on antibiotics, which we still worked every day. Now, those symptoms kind of came back once or twice following, but weren't severe, right? They weren't intense. Right. So she didn't have, she hasn't had to take any of that. Um, so moving ahead to where we are now, and you are eating fruits and vegetables. One of the things a lot of people tell me is their doctors tell them not to eat a lot of fruit because if you have systemic candida, it will make it worse. What have you found with that since we've been working together? It's not true. I enjoy a lot of, uh, fruits. I, I, I follow lots of the, the diets and the meals that are in Anthony Williams' books, and that's how I do my cooking. And that's, that's absolutely not true. I eat fruits and vegetables all day long. Yeah. And your brain needs problem. it. Your brain needs it. No, you don't have a sugar problem. Now you had problems with your blood pressure too. That was one of the things from the yeah, beginning. For many years, I had intense high blood pressure. And now my blood pressure is is unbelievably, uh, it's remarkable. It's so good. Yeah, her, her blood pressure is normal. I mean, normal and healthy. Um, and you're not on any kind of, you weren't taking blood pressure meds back then though, when we first started either, were you? No, because I was allergic to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have a long list of things that I'm allergic to at the doctor's office. And I think it was just my chronic illness, but my body wouldn't, or my liver body wouldn't accept any type of medication. So let's talk about, because <clears throat> we did talk about your dry eyes and your dry sinuses. What happened? What changed that one day you called me? Uh, you mean when I had an emotional breakthrough or? That and uh, the flakes. Oh, oh. Well, I think that you did some work on me and you checked on me after you had done the magnets and I had this tremendous emotional breakthrough because a lot of this detoxing and this work on on all of this causes a lot of uh, old old past things to get released and so we sort of process old things as well. And so I just was crying and hysterical and I was very sad. It was very emotionally draining. I wouldn't say I was hysterical, but 
it was the first time I had shed tears like that in many, many years since way before my husband died in 2019. And you were very happy. And when I went and looked in the mirror after that, there were all these flakes all over my face where my tears were. And I was surprised and you were pleased because those takes, those flakes were, that was a part of the detoxing, right? Yeah. They're old pathogens. Yeah. We, and I remember you had one other time, <clears throat> not that long ago, maybe a month ago where there were flakes that came out, you know, because, and, they still and do. So, yeah, they still, yeah. So they're still clearing. Um, but then your sinuses too change. Oh, yes. Everything opened up as far as my sinuses. It's heaven to be able to discharge your sinuses. <laughs> yeah, blow your nose. Blow your nose like a normal person yes. and get yes, relief indeed. from it. Yes. And what about your chronic headaches, your migraines? Oh, many years of torture trying to get treatment for migraines with the Imitrex and the poison and the Botox that they gave me. And the migraines are gone. Amazing. All that vomiting and all that pain, that's gone. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. So here we are today. Um, and we've shifted and changed, I mean, a ton of stuff. And you do... <laughs> As strange as it is to talk about this, I want people to understand, only share what you're willing to share and what you feel comfortable sharing. We have killed off a ton of parasites and you've seen them come out, right? Yes. Do you want to explain that? <laughs> like, cause, cause I don't think people realize like they'll do a parasite detox with pills and stuff and not really see anything. Did, what did you see? Well, I'll just put it this way. I have um, wormed my animals before, cats and dogs, mm -hmm. and I have visibly seen um, what happens when I do that. But so I witnessed that, that within myself, uh, along with other strange, uh, terrible looking <laughs> creatures that I had no idea existed in my intestines probably all these years, as, as you've explained to me. I and mean, it wasn't just it, it, a little bit, right? Oh, it's, it was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot. And still to this day, I think we're still getting some, some I yeah. don't, I don't know. Um, I've been learning here. So always ask Bernadette all these questions, not me, but um, it was something else. I've, I've said, what a journey this has been, because you would be surprised at what is inside your body. On the flip side of all of this, this is something I do want you to share because I know a lot of people that choose to go the natural, you know, choose to use alternative treatments. And I went through this when I had cancer um, and treated it naturally. What's the journey been like with people? Like, how have they reacted to, to you working with me, especially considering it's long distance? I only have a small circle of friends that are in my life right now. And, mm -hmm. uh, and although they don't understand, they are supportive, but they, what we're doing is so detailed that they can't begin to really fully understand because I don't spend all day explaining it to them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they've been supportive as much as they can be, and they've not doubted because they've seen the difference in me and they can tell the difference in me. Right. Yeah. I'm healing. It's well. working. Yeah. So your liver is working. You're not, I mean, while you have moments, cause we're still detoxing and <clears throat> we have not completed all of her treatments and, and all of the detoxing that she's doing by any means. I mean, there's still some stuff. She's still got, um, nerve pain down her leg and we still have some, some issues in her pelvic region, which is for women, a lot of times where old viruses, pathogens reside is in the pelvic region. Um, and women get all the pains there versus men. I mean, men don't have all of the pelvic stuff that goes on, but women do. So a lot of your pain uh, that's remaining, it's down, down one leg, right? But your facial yeah. stuff, like the, the nerve pain in your face, how's that? It's gone. 
<laughs> it's gone. <laughs> and we had some things happen in February with her just a month into our work together with her teeth. Because as we were doing all of this, there was a lot of bacteria that was coming out, old viruses, old bacteria in the mouth that was coming out. And at one point, you had to go to the dentist, right? I did. I did. Um, they were cavities. Um, so they had to repair them and, and give me crowns. And she was terrified. She was going to have to have a root canal. I'm like, nah, don't need a root canal. And if they tell you you need one, don't do one because it's not necessary. Like we're getting all of the bacteria to come out. Um, and you went through all of that in the middle of all of the stuff we were doing and it went okay, right? It did. It did. With your support and your help, it went fine. I was, I was in so much fear because you have always said that I was fight, flight or fight mode. Mm -hmm. And that's what this chronic illness did to me. Yeah. So I was even afraid to go to the dentist. And I've been with him for many years. He was very kind. I just told him I was cleaning up my, my intestines and my gut. And he said, of course, bacteria ends up in your mouth. So, you know, he was very supportive. And it does. I mean, that is, you know, again, if you, if you were as sick as she was, you know, when you start to kill stuff off, it's going to come out in places you wouldn't think that it would come out. And so some, sometimes you're going to have things like all of a sudden you didn't have any, any kind of mouth problem and now your teeth start to act up and it, it's just the body shaking out <clears throat> all the places where there's been bacteria and it hasn't been addressed. Your liver is working better now right you're eating and and we're back on solid food it's been how long how long have you been back on solid food a month <clears throat> longer? Uh, probably probably a good month maybe a little longer it it's so wonderful to taste food and 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 make some recipes and and mm -hmm. bake some little loaves and bake some uh pancakes it's it, it food tastes so good to my palate i'm enjoying it i'm so happy and your emotions, how are your emotions now? I am such a pleasant, happy girl. What a journey this has been. It has been. There I'm were just, days, there were days so of, of tears and fears and doubts, right? I think it's a part of the detoxing also, isn't it? Mm -hmm. you, you go through mental, emotional things as well because... All of that's held in the liver. So, yes, it's yeah. been a lot of emotional, uh, a lot of old things, um, old traumas and old things that have happened in my life have come up through this cleansing process. Yeah, Amazing we used tapping. Journey. I remember we did some EFT one day because things were pretty intense. A lot yes. of this old, old traumas, old, old traumas were coming up and and to calm all of that down and also discharge the emotions tied to all of those memories, we did do some tapping. Um, and since then, how is it with getting your paperwork and stuff in order? Oh, I've been very busy. I'm so busy. I'm almost bored. I've taken care of almost everything I can possibly handle and then some. <laughs> Anything that's broken, I've been contacting the manufacturer and get, getting them to replace it. It's it's out standing the mental progress that's happened the clarity of mind i am just such a in such a better place as far as that goes this has been amazing awesome see that makes me happy and i know for all of you i know i'm leaving out a lot like i have pages and pages i mean she knew that she had heavy metal um toxicity that came up on her blood work when she sent me her blood work a month after we started working together, everything I'd already been working on was confirmed. So it was nice to have some lab work to compare what I was getting and what I was working on in the sessions. It was nice to have the comparison, but there were things that I've, I'd been working on and continue to this day to work on that were not in her blood work. And it isn't so much that, okay, well, this virus has been confirmed. You know, yeah, she has EBV and yeah, she has this or that. That's not the point. It's how are they dancing together? And in fact, in your blood work, cause I was going over it before we jumped on, um, even Epstein-Barr, 
it was saying that it was a past infection, HH6, a past infection. They kept referring to it as past infections, not reactivated or current things affecting you now, just that you had the antibodies, which I think is a big misconception, right? Like, oh, well, it's not activated. I don't have current symptoms. However, all of the symptoms that you had um, and been battling with are actual symptoms of those viruses being left untreated and, and reactivating, right? Absolutely. And I was eating the eggs and meat. And yeah. then I had all of those medical procedures and that gallbladder surgery blew it up to the maximum. So it didn't help you when you had that surgery. It was supposed to relieve everything and it didn't. Absolutely. It did not help one bit. Yeah. Because, because, and let me explain to all of you, Susan knows this well, we've been over this multiple times, your gallbladder is the reservoir for bile. The liver produces the bile to help digest the food and push it out of your system down that very long intestinal tract that you have. When you don't have a reservoir of backup and you eat something fatty or you eat something hard to digest like meat... Um, or you have a virus and it needs to die off, the liver's job, it's a factory. It creates antibodies, it creates vitamins, it turns your food into energy and it, everything goes through the liver first, including before it, it goes into your heart, everything hits the liver. But the gallbladder is the liver's backup. The gallbladder is where it stores the additional reserves of bile and without a gallbladder, your liver's basically just constantly dripping constantly dripping like a faucet. Um, but when you need a big reserve, if the liver's congested, it doesn't have the ability. There were times when Susan and I were doing some stuff with the die off before the liver really started to kick in that she <laughs> would be in massive pain. And I, the way I explained it to her was, you know, this, your liver's being squeezed like a sponge to get every last drop of bile because it doesn't have the reserves from the gallbladder. Explain what that felt like, Susan. Well, we refer to it as liver pinching, and it is the most painful abdominal. It, it is ex excruciating abdominal pain. It is a pinching feeling, and you just want to grab your, your stomach and double over. And there was one time in the very beginning mm -hmm. before we... In the very, very beginning where I spent a weekend with just water with my liver going through that. And I didn't know if I was going to live or not. It was, um, yeah. It, it's intense. And I called one of my healer friends as reinforcement. I literally had her run a session um, because it had gotten so, so acute. And there it was like, all right, I'm doing everything I can. Is there anything else we can do? So she went at it from the healing modalities that she uses, which is miracle breath. Um, and we tag teamed and we got her through the weekend. And thankfully it did relieve, but there were multiple times Susan said to me, this, this is the kind of stuff that I, I would go to an emergency room for. And I told her, like, if you want to go, I'm not telling you not to. If you think that there's something that they can do, absolutely go. And you refuse to. Why? Because I'd already been there four <laughs> times you know, last year, and there wasn't anything they could do. And I know the protocol so well. They do a CT scan, which is more, there's more radiation to your body. They do a CT scan. It comes up remarkable. They look at you and they send you home. I mean, unfortunately, one time one of the doctors said to me, what do you want from me? Everything appears to be fine. I'm sorry you say you have this pain. We don't see it. Yeah. And unfortunately, their tests aren't going to see it. You know, it takes, you have to know what are the pathogens? What are the bacteria, the viruses, the funguses, the parasites, and how are they dancing together in the system? Where are they hiding out? And then create the alkalinity within the body, the pH balance within the body so that they cannot survive and they die off. But then you have to eliminate. And if you cannot eliminate the die off on your own, you have to do things to get it to happen. 
but from a lymphatic standpoint too, like your lymphs weren't necessarily draining properly either, right? Right. Yeah. So we address all, I mean, her entire body, like biomagnetism, it's the entire body. It's all the viruses. And there's no point like in telling you guys all the stuff that we went, we've been through together, a long journey of crazy symptoms, things that would pop up. And I would have to like figure out, all right, what is happening? Like I would do a session and it would create die off, but then something else then would happen. Susan's very, very sensitive to the energy um, of everything I'm doing. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't text her until I was starting the timer because the scan would take me a good hour and then placing the magnets. And then, you know, I would let her know when the timer starts, but she would be texting me saying, well, this is happening. If that's happening, it was when I was placing the magnet on that specific part of the body. Do you remember that? I could feel, I can feel the energy when you're placing the magnets, things start tingling or things start uh, um, awakening so I could feel the energy a lot of times, most of the time, when you're placing the magnets before you even tell me that the timer started. I know what you're working on because you're waking my body up and I can I can feel it. Now, there were a couple times um, that, and, and I have had to find specific, what we call personal pairs, biomagnetic pairs that are specific to her body, specific to what she's needing. There was a couple of times because I did work on some of the traumatic brain injury points in the brain leading to the different parts of the body because she's had so much in the way of trauma. We needed to rewire the brain too. And because she has nerve pain, there was a couple of times that I made, did a couple of placements and it actually created, I remember one time it was tinnitus, like your ear started ringing. So you texted me, right? I did. I did <laughs> right away. And then I did, I did remove that pair one time. And one time I didn't remove the pair. I just added another pair to offset the tinnitus and it stopped immediately. Did it not? It did. Yes. Yeah. So we was, I was still able to get the results from the initial pair, um, but had to balance something else out that was causing the tinnitus. Funny enough. So that, those are the things, I mean, that can happen. Um, and it did absolutely, because I, I do have some people that, you know, I mentor that are bio, they're learning biomagnetism. And I will tell you, there are moments when you start to think, my God, I'm, you know, is this ever going to get better? Because I'm an empath. I take on everybody's, you know, I, I not take it on, but I can feel everybody's emotions. And there was moments of panic. She would be in a place of panic and I would have to keep it really calm and feed back the calmness to her. It's really easy to go, well, maybe I don't know enough. Maybe this isn't working. You know, maybe, maybe she just needs to go back to the doctor. There were moments, I'm not going to lie. There were moments that I'm like, man, this has been tough, especially that weekend <laughs> with the liver stuff. I was like, oh my God, call for reinforcements. And then I just stuck to it and, and I meditated and prayed and spirit just said, you're doing the right thing. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. Then they would tell me there's going to be a turning point this day, or there's going to be a shift on that day. And, and true to form, it always happened. So here we are not at the end, end of her journey, but we're at the end of all the big stuff. Like there was so much pages and pages and pages of problems, symptoms that we've had to chase after and, and the viruses and taking care of all of it. How are you feeling overall now? I feel so happy. I've told you many times I'm 62 and I feel like I'm reborn. I'm happy. I'm looking forward to my life. I know this is going to be okay. I didn't have much hope. You gave me some in the beginning. You told me I was going to get through this. I'm so and excited about my future. And I'm also excited because a big part of me going through this, I've been saying for a long time, is I've always felt that when you go through something this traumatic, this intense, the best way that you can 
heal yourself is to pass it on. And I hope this helps someone else understand that just going to get the symptoms treated is not going to always work for you. And there's certainly hope in biomagnetism. And you did, I mean, you did change your lifestyle. You know, we didn't do all the protocol. Literally, I think, what were the supplements I had you take out of the medical medium besides the celery juice? I mean, zinc and cat's call. Uh, of course, I take like vitamin uh, D and vitamin B. Um, oh, and we did the vitamin C shots. And vitamin C shot therapy you had me do. I, mm-hmm. I do take uh, olive leaf and that's in his that's in his protocol as well. And mm-hmm. I also take oil of oregano and I think that's in his protocol as well. I don't well. know if that's I in his protocol. I take l Elizing, yeah. I don't know. I don't remember. Um, and I had her, so I have my own list of go tos. <laughs> and oil of oregano was one of them, um, because oil of oregano is super strong. And she thought I was crazy when I told her to put it in her mouth, but it will kill bacteria in your mouth. Oil of oregano is extremely potent. You only need a drop or two um, in a glass of water, but it has such amazing properties to as an antiviral as an antimicrobial as an antibiotic but it isn't always easy to take it burns it can burn if you're not mixing it with enough water i use it in my mouth any of you that have periodontal disease or you have any kind of bacteria in your mouth or problems in your mouth to use it regularly will will resolve the issue like i've used it because i was getting abscesses years ago i would keep getting gum abscesses so i had her taken she was like you're crazy <laughs> but you did it right you also had me um using coconut oil and doing oil pulling oil pulling too yep to help pull all of that bacteria out absolutely i think that was when we started that is about the time that your teeth started to have an issue yes because we were pulling all the old bacteria out of her mouth and around and and the trigeminal nerves, which is the nerve bundle responsible for your mouth, your teeth, your sinuses, and even your eyes. When we pull all that bacteria out, that's when her, her tears came back. That's when her sinuses came back as I was doing the magnets on top of all of that. I mean, it was combination. This is not just do biomagnetism and it's a, a cure-all. I think biomagnetism is miraculous, but when you're that sick, you have to address things on a whole other level. You have to address all of it. What are you putting into your body? Right? Yes. Any other things you want to share? Because, I mean, she's got a lot of stuff. She had hormone imbalance. She had thyroid imbalance. I mean, a ton of stuff. Pelvic inflammatory, pelvic pain. I mean, oh, there's a list. And some of it's very... um very personal. So I'm not going to share any of that with you guys, but I'm telling you, she was sick. And I want you to hear that from her. Oh, I was very sick. I had, I had sat here for, for two months convinced that I was not going to live. And I, my, my mind was not okay. And so I consider it a blessing that I, I followed you online anyway, but I wasn't that good at sitting at my computer because I couldn't focus on anything at all. My, the toxins had me so ill. And I'm just very grateful that by, I, I knew that this was it as soon as I heard you talking about it on your live. I hope anyone gives this a try. If your symptoms are mild, if you are running and doing all the -the over-the-counter medications, they're so expensive these days, you may save yourself some money. I mean, it's amazing the stuff I've thrown away. Well, and yeah, she's thrown away a lot of her food too. She was was like, Bernadette, (laughs) it's heartbreaking giving away food and her freezer and, and changing all of it. But now with how you feel, how do you feel about that? Oh, that was poison. That was uh that was not food that I gave I gave it to my neighbor. It wasn't food that I was giving away. <laughs> it wasn't good for me. So it isn't stuff that I ever plan on eating anymore. I don't mind. That's yeah, okay. but when I when had... you're first told like, look, you can't eat that stuff anymore, I know that it had an effect on you. 
oh, I, you feel sorry for yourself. You're going through all these emotions, and you think that you're not going to enjoy or taste or survive or, or have a good, healthy way of eating any longer. And so, you know, I, I felt sorry for myself for a while there because I couldn't have the bad stuff that was poisoning me. That's not very logical thinking, you know. But I quickly got over it because the as, the more that I got the bad out of my life, the better I started to feel. Yeah. Some days I could hardly wait to talk to you because I was so happy about how much better things were. And one other thing, I mean, if you are chronically ill and you do come to work with me, um, not everybody, I mean, I, Susan and I have known each other for a long time, long time. And I had made her a promise <laughs> a long time ago when I stopped working with her husband. I was like, I'm not working with him anymore. I fired him as a client. But if you ever need anything, I will be there for you. So Susan's a, like a very special person to me. Um I don't know that, I mean, obviously if someone was as chronically ill as she was and they had the resources, yes, I will work with you at that level, but that's going to cost a lot of money. Not everybody needs the amount of attention that I gave her. She was that bad. It was that bad. And I had told her this last week, but she asked me specifically in the beginning, like, don't tell me what's wrong. Don't like, it'll just make it worse. Um, with the mixture of all the viruses and all the bacteria and everything else. The next step would have been cancer. So she wasn't wrong when she had that feeling like I need to get my affairs in order because I'm not going to make it. If, if she had not done all of this, her body would have just continued that slow or quick decline to the point where she would have been diagnosed with cancer. If she had gone back to a doctor, um, she didn't have it when we started, like I check and I checked, she didn't have cancer. And I let her know that, but with the mixture of how everything was operating and all the things shutting down in her body, especially when your liver shuts down, that's the next step. When your liver can't process toxins anymore, what do you think is going to happen? Right. Cancer is caused by a, a combination of viruses, bacterias, multiple viruses and bacterias and it's just your body is not alkaline it's acidic and then cancer can easily develop um so we saved her from all of that and now now she's eating but we're not out of the woods yet as far as like the nerves we're still trying to address the nerves you've dealt with the nerve pain for how many years at least 20 yeah but we and have not saying I'm sorry. No, we have gotten some of it to reduce, right? Yes, a lot. We have gotten a lot of it to reduce. And I'm not saying anything bad. I did go to acupuncturists, chiropractors, mm -hmm. physical therapists. They're all fine for their particular areas, but really they didn't know and weren't addressing the deep issue of the problem of the nerve pain. So mm -hmm. I've learned since we've been working together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, it's taking a bit. And and to explain to all of you, um, just in the sim most simple terms for you to understand, when you have chronic nerve pain like that, nerves react to inflammation in the body. You have any kind of pathogen in the body that's creating inflammation. Your body's on high alert to try and re reduce injury to the cells, to the tissues, to the whatever. When nerves are innervated for any amount of time and 20 years is a very long time. Most people will tell you there's no way to fix nerve damage. And when you have things like post neuralgia, it is said there's no way to fix it. I don't ever believe there's no way to fix it. The body's a miraculous thing. But what you have to do is get the inflammation out from around the myelin sheath. You have to get the nerve conduction happening better. And there have been times when I'm working on specifically just the nerves where it's taken her pain level up and then reduced it later, like a day later, like it's unfortunately, as we're reconnecting the conduction and the messaging between the nerves and the brain, it's taken some work. Um, and it's still taking work because nerve damage is, is not an easy thing or a quick fix. 
but it's not impossible. Like I'm not giving up because I know we've seen enough of reduction on a scale of one to 10. What was your nerve pain in the beginning? Oh, absolutely a 10. And where is it now? I would say I'm at a five or six. Yeah. So half. And same with your vertigo. Where was your vertigo when we started? Absolutely a 10. And now I'm, it's at a two. Yeah. Nice. And that, that, that vertigo, interesting enough to share with you guys, whenever her liver would get more, like be detoxing something um, or have a problem, what would happen with your vertigo and your nerve pain? Oh, it, it, it intenses, it gets, it, it intensifies. So the pain, the pain gets much worse when the liver's having problems having problems detoxing. And initially, yeah. like she was like, I don't think it has anything to do with the other. No, it absolutely has everything. All of your body systems are tied together. So you have nerve pain. You think it has nothing to do with your liver. It absolutely has something to do with your liver. You know, I, I have worked on and placed for the vagus nerve to the kidneys um, to help with all of that. But the vagus nerve was not enough to address it. I actually had to start separating out and <laughs> in the midst of all of this, I have my QXCI machine. In the midst of all of this, I was able a couple of weeks ago to get access, reactivate my program for the QXCI. And so it runs a full scan of everything in the body, but it separates the nerves, it separates the teeth, the organs and all of that. And sure enough, it confirmed everything that I've been working on. But on top of that, it allowed me to separate out exactly what nerve and where in the head exactly I needed to place it and then where it was enervated in the rest of the body, whether it was down the spine, um, down the front of the body, down, you know, wherever. That's been helpful as well. But your body doesn't react as well to the to the machine as it does to the magnets, right? I think you said for some reason my body sets off the alarm. It does. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. There's an alarm on the machine so that you you can't hurt anybody. If the body doesn't like what's happening, it will it will set an alarm off in my program and then it all it locks everything down. I can correct the alarm a couple of times, three times, but after three times, the entire thing stops. Like it will not let you work. And it it is set that way so that you don't give someone a heart attack. You literally can give someone a heart attack if you're putting too much energy into their heart. Her body was shutting it down, like immediately. The first, I think the first couple of times I, I did work on you, um, on the machine, it did accept the frequencies, but still it was too much. And her body just responds much faster to the magnets. So anything else you want to share, honey? Well, didn't you also tell me that a, a lot of these viruses are stored in the brain? And so uh -huh. you've been doing so much brain work on me as well. And so that also had everything to do with my not clear thinking and my brain fog and all of the anxiety and all of that. Epstein-Barr is one of the worst. Um, Epstein-Barr combined with cytomegalovirus, CMV. Um, and then strep, and you had all of those in your body am among many other bacteria and pathogens. But the Epstein bar is one of the worst when it comes to brain fog, when it comes to depression, when it comes to neurological deficits um, and anxiety and all of those things. But on top of that, yeah, you had so many events with PTSD that your brain had just, it had rewired itself to avoid certain past memories right? You do that yeah. enough times. Now the communication between your brain and the rest of your body starts to interrupt. And literally there's, there were multiple things that throughout the years, um, have gotten on your nerves as we've spoken without, you know, without getting into detail. So yeah, I had to work and still continue to work on the brain. And that's part of what the dealing with the vertigo, because the normal protocol in biomagnetism for vertigo wasn't doing anything for your symptoms. There and were, I, for years, I, I'm sorry. No, go for ahead. For years, I did not have dreams. My, I never got good quality sleep. And so I started processing things in my sleep once the biomagnetism was working. 
started processing things in my sleep and having lots of heavenly dreams now. So sleeping is a whole different issue for me as well. I'm so excited. Anything else you want to share with people? Because please, your journey has been please. so in- insanely intense. It has. And I can't wait to, to finalize it. I doubt if it'll ever be finished, but I can't say enough good things about you and biomagnetism because it's literally changed my life. I'm a happy girl. And uh, I hope we have a lot more to share here. I think we will. I, think, I mean, there's so much, and there's so much I haven't shared. There's so much we can't talk. We'd be on here for hours, hours yeah, talking about everything would. that we went through and all of the things that we've, we've addressed. One of the things that she had too, when we first started working together, that has slowly changed. Um, when you took a shower, what, explain what was happening to your skin. The water would sting my body. Um, my skin was just flaking. And so the, I forgot about this. The water from the shower would sting my body and it was actually very painful to take a shower. And then once I got out of the shower, I was just bright red all over like I had been, you know, um, a sunburn. It was terrible. It was very painful to take a shower. I had to mentally prepare myself just to jump in the shower. Uh, and, and now? Hurt. I take, I have no problems with it. And you had red spots that like those red spots, they've progressed, like didn't, didn't the, the reduction of that kind of just, it was a progression, right? Yeah. There were hot spots everywhere. You explained to me that that was toxins and, and that was also lymph nodes. I think you said, but there were hot spots everywhere after I'd taken a shower and I'd say, why is my nose so red? And there were other places all over my body after a shower and I was not using hot water because it hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, and you explained to me that that was, that was a part of it coming out after a shower. Yeah. Yeah. And, and checking um, your skin now after a shower, there isn't the redness. Right. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Same with her hands. I mean, seriously, there's been so many changes <laughs> to her body. I've been through so much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on and sharing. I know it's taken us a couple tries to get here on the recording to be able to record this um, and share your story. I appreciate you and your courage. I appreciate you. I thank you so much. And I hope this helps someone else out there. Um, there is hope. There is hope always. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Susan. We are done for today. And, you know, I have no doubt that I'll bring her back once we're beyond all of the stuff with the nerve pain. That's going to take some time, but we wanted to at least do this for you guys. This has been since January 5th, um, the journey that she's been on of intense healing since January 5th. It is now April. 10th. We were going to record this last week and I don't remember what happened, but something happened and we ended up not doing it. Um, but as much as, you know, looking at it now, it seems like it's not that long of a journey. Some of you may think that's too long of a journey. Others of you may think, Hey, that's not that long of a journey. The reality is everybody's body's different. I can't predict how long it's going to take your body to heal. Um, And it depends on everything that you have going on in your system. You know, there's many viruses. One person can have Epstein-Barr and not have any neurological deficits from it. Someone else can have Epstein-Barr mixed with another pathogen and you can't think straight, but then you feel um, depressed and have irrational fears. I never know. And it isn't just Epstein-Barr. I mean, there's so many viruses and pathogens roaming around this planet And we just have to figure out what's going on within your body specifically and then address it. But you've got to be willing to change your diet. You've got to be willing to do the things like Susan did, you know, and and for her, I waited, I think it was like three weeks to tell her to start the enemas. I knew in the beginning she wasn't strong enough, but at that point it was absolutely necessary. So you have to be willing to do those things if that's something that, you know, I tell you when we work together, it may seem strange and what the hell is this girl doing? I never tell people to do something that is going to hurt them. 
I always tell you to do things that is only going to help you and speed along your healing. And so Susan, thank you for trusting me. <laughs> thank you so much for helping me. You're welcome.